Greetings Legionnaires and welcome. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than I normally do because I'm reviewing a book. Yes, it's Ride of Lifetime by the one and only Robert Iger. The reason I'm reviewing a book is because my friend Christine, aka Ivy Winter, please go check out her channel. It's at Ivy Winter YouTube. Go check her out. She's fantastic. Covers mostly Disney stuff. But she kind of asked people to go through and do a monthly book club and I'm a bit late to it. But I finally finished the book and by finished it I mean I finally listened to it all the way through. So, as with all my reviews, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is a brief, spoiler-free plot synopsis, to some degree, and talk about the highlights and the shortcomings of it. So, what the heck is this book? Well, believe it or not, CEO of Disney, Robert Iger, decided to release a book talking about not only his personal rise throughout the ranks of the company, but also leadership tenants, or the things he follows in order to be a good leader. So you find out where he started, which was working pretty much on these daytime soap operas and other things for ABC, and eventually, now, right now, he's working as the CEO of this Fortune 500 company. Hearing about that story, well, that is exactly what you're going to get in this book. I'll start with the highlights, which... For me, it was pretty much the whole thing. I found it fascinating. It was so cool to listen to it because in the beginning and the ending, you do get it narrated by Robert Iger. Uh, so it's kind of fun to hear him talk about it. You can tell the guy ne doesn't necessarily want to like sit there and read his own story for eight and a half hours. And that's probably one of the reasons why he didn't actually do the whole thing. And because he's also still a CEO. This is not one of those like memoir books. So that's another fascinating concept behind it as well. I think... There's a little more power in his statements because he is still the CEO and talking about what led him to be successful and then what continues to lead him to be successful. So even if you're not a Disney fan, I think you'll enjoy one pillar of this book being what it takes to be a good leader. And that's something I'm striving to be all the time is to be a better leader and just a better person in general. So a lot of it reinforced the things that I'm already doing. And it was nice to hear that a CEO uh, was kind of talking about that. I was like, okay, this is really, I'm glad that I'm not the only one, you know, thinking about this and kind of hearing his humility throughout all of it was, was so nice to hear as well. And, you know, it's, it's so, I think it could be so easy. So, um, so, so easy to just say like, you know what? No, I'm the CEO of Disney and everything I do is right. And everybody else is wrong. But hearing his tale his his humbling tales and this kind of fraught with like good and bad is really, really fascinating to me. So again, there's the kind of the leadership pillar of this book, and then on the other hand, his personal journey, working his way through the company, and not necessarily trying to get to this point, but starting way, way back in the day when ABC was their own company. So keep that in mind as well. As far as the shortcomings go, I don't even know what to tell you. I can't really find any, maybe because you might not want to hear about how these acquisitions actually took place, but it's so fascinating to me to hear about these you know, these personal stories, uh, you know, talking about Pixar and Steve Jobs and how Bob kind of formed a relationship with Steve and kind of hearing the tumultuous times of like, if this was going to happen or if it wasn't going to happen. And then kind of similar thing with George Lucas, which is crazy because when I think about when I heard about Marvel getting acquired and Star Wars getting acquired, for me, it was more of like, oh yeah, Star Wars, that makes sense. That's on brand for them. They've been working with, you know, George in the past for a long, long time, and especially in the parks. Marvel was just like, for me, I was like, perfect, because now it's like Disney is acquiring one of my favorite things, and they're probably going to do it right. And so, again, that surface level, here it is, but hearing all the work that went into it is so fascinating. I think one of the stories I love the most is that George Lucas was more willing to talk to Bob about this, because a long time ago, he Bob kept one of the shows that wasn't doing so well, which is like the Young Adventures of Indiana Jones, on for another season, an additional season. And George was always really appreciative of that. It's so crazy to me to think about how these kind acts in the past work so much and are such a big deal in the present and the future. It just kind of goes to show that, you know, being kind and humble and respecting other people and their work is at the utmost of this because, yeah, there are billions and billions of dollars going through this, but at the end of the day, George Lucas created this thing, you know, Steve Jobs ran Pixar, like stuff like that. And just hearing about how all that works is so interesting. Also, I kind of just want a book of Bob's just like 
day to day for a full year because at the beginning of this he talks about one of his like happiest and saddest days that were like the same day and it's almost like hearing about like a president's kind of timetable where he has to he like gets up at four and works out then he's got like a meeting with these people at five something else at 5 15 something else at 5 30 at six o'clock he's got to talk to these chinese dignitaries like all this stuff it was just really interesting to hear about this person who is kind of working his way through all these different facets of the company at the same time really really cool and uh, I I just kind of want more of it to be honest with you I was like oh this is crazy and it's funny because he's on a bunch of the Disney Plus stuff now too where I see that and I'm like oh yeah I already know that story because I like listened to the book so yeah uh, I'm t we're in shortcomings I'm still talking about how much is I enjoy this thing so maybe we're not maybe there's no shortcomings for me personally remember this is an eight and a half hour or eight hour and 45 minute book if you have it read to you, which I enjoy because I'm not the fastest reader and I go reread things because I don't remember if I actually read that and then I think about things in three minutes that I should go back and check and like two pages ago, it's, it's a whole thing. But it's a little bit of a time commitment, so keep that in mind. But if you're commuting or driving somewhere, the other narrator um, is Jim Frenji, something like that. He does an excellent job of doing the, the big meat of the whole thing, like the eight hours for the most part. So... I would recommend, uh, I, I, you know, I'd recommend giving it a shot. So overall, I don't know if I can rate this. It's a book, you know, so I think there's plenty of people out there who are going to be more qualified than I am to rate something like this out of 10. I don't read a ton of books. So I'm going to do this. Like I said, right back there, I am just going to say I'm either going to recommend it or I'm not going to recommend it. I recommend it. I recommend it on the basis of two things. Are you a Disney fan? And then also, are you interested in just kind of learning how to be a better leader? That's how my recommendation is going to work for this one. Either way, thank you guys so much for joining me here today. Again, go check out Ivy Winter's channel. She's the one who kind of thought of this whole book club idea. So go check her out. She's fantastic. Hi, Christine. And, uh, well, until next time, just remember to adapt and overcome. <laughs>